Okay, so you can start by introducing yourself and then you can go ahead and tell your story. Okay, um, my name is Claire. Um, I'm 22, I'll be 23 soon. Um, I have been vegan for, well, had been vegan for almost six years. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, everything, like I've always eaten really healthy, so it's it never was like a really big, um, sort of like surprise, like how some people are like, oh my God, it was so hard. Um, it was always really, it just felt very natural sort of, um, which I don't know, kind of feels silly now, but not really. Um, my mom had been, she's been like a vegetarian on and off since she was like 13. Um, <clears throat> so it was always sort of, to not eat meat, it was pretty normal. Um, and but I never, we never grew up vegetarian, um, but we definitely grew up a lot healthier than like the standard American diet. So it, I, I just always like to eat healthy. And um, the only way you can eat healthy is fruits and vegetables. So that's just what I did. And um, when I was young, like when, when I found veganism, it was through like fitness accounts on Instagram and stuff like that. And um, I just never did any of my own research, which is so silly now looking back on it being like you know, almost six years older um, because I research everything so much now. It is like, how did I not? There's so many things that I just didn't know that I'm like, how is no one talking about this on like vegan YouTube and all that stuff? It's like, it drives me crazy now. I'm like, there's so many little things where I'm like, how is no one talking about this? But they just don't know. And I just have to like, think like they don't know, like I didn't know. So, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, what was I going to say? Oh, and I, so I first went vegan for health reasons. Um, but then I watched earthlings. So obviously ethics sort of followed along. Cause it's a really, really, I cried so much. It's so hard to watch. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah. Um, and I don't doubt that those things happen in factory farming. Like, and just because I'm not vegan now does not mean I support factory farming. And that's how I think almost everyone is in like ex vegan community because you don't want to support that because it is horrible. So, and that's why I care so much now about buying local stuff and just like caring, just being, you know, cautious and um, just having respect for, you know, who's making the food and whatever. So, um, yeah, for the first like two years I was vegan, um, I had no health problems. I felt like fine. I didn't feel better, but I never felt worse. It just kind of felt like this is normal. This is like, it just became very normal to me. I didn't have any, like, you know, how you had so many health issues. Mm -hmm. um, a few good. Um, so I watched your stories and stuff. So I never had any of that, which is followed now. So, um, but it um how old was I I was 19 and yeah I was 19 and one night I didn't know what was happening but I had a gallbladder attack um and it I didn't know what it was I was just in excruciating pain for it was like two weeks nonstop. I was a nanny then so I had to call off work I couldn't I couldn't get out of bed I literally couldn't hardly go to the bathroom I couldn't get up um I was in so much horrible pain and then I finally went to the urgent care after just medical doctors being so horrible to me and not even everything just going over their head. Um, they did an ultrasound and found gallstones and they were like, you have gallstones. And I was like, what? Like, how do I get that? I'm a healthy 19 year old like woman. Like, how did I get that? I don't necessarily blame it on veganism because I was on birth control, but, and I looked that up and birth control can cause gallbladder disease, 
who knew? Um, but I think that's, yeah, so that's really what caused it. But then what followed was I should have stopped being vegan there because I was having IBS symptoms and like the most horrible low in pain I have ever felt in my whole life. And it was like almost two years that I just dealt with it. And I thought like it became normal to me that I thought that's how everyone felt after meals. And I can't like, I can't even believe that I used to feel like that. Like and if I didn't eat, then I would also get like my, it was just like I was filled with air and like my back would hurt from all the air inside of me. My shoulders would hurt my jaw. Like it was great. And um, so eventually it, it's got a little bit better, um, but it still was not good. And that's really when I found it all coincided so horribly. It was when I found like YouTube you know, vegans freely. Raw till four was huge then. It was like back in 2015. Mm -hmm. High carb low fat was like at its peak. Um, like Ellen Fisher and Stella Ray when she was doing high carb low fat, like Nina and Randa. And so I, and I like those foods. Like, I mean, I love eating sweet potatoes and like salad and like beans and stuff. They all taste good, but I wasn't putting it together that they were hurting my stomach so bad because I was eating so much fiber and for every single meal, like I was having humongous smoothies and fruit and then, you know, rice and beans and potatoes for dinner every single day. And I just did not feel good, obviously. So that went on for a long time and we moved, we lived in Phoenix and then we lived in LA and LA has obviously tons of vegan options. Some are better than others. Um, and like health wise. Um, and then I started to feel like just, it just became so normal to me that I thought that that's just how everyone felt. And my boyfriend was also vegan. Like he sort of slowly transitioned um, he came from like kind of a really crappy American diet. Um, and so he was vegan too. And um, it was really always about ethics. We were never, it started to move away from health and was more just ethics. So it was never, I, I, I always care what I'm eating, but it was never, I don't know. It was always, is it vegan? Like, oh, is this a fried food in canola oil? oh it's vegan oh then it's fine like mm -hmm. instead of me wanting to eat like an egg over you know fried fatty vegan foods like I would always equate oh it's vegan it's healthy over this unprocessed whatever so um yeah and then um I got pregnant in 2017 or 20 yeah 2017 sort of out of the blue and um not really planned, but it was fine. And I was so sick. My first six and a half months, I was just so incredibly sick and I couldn't eat anything. I lost so much weight. Um, I lost at least 10 pounds within like two months and I'm five, seven, so I'm not that short. Um, and I'm always been naturally very thin but my healthy weight is like probably 120, 125 is how I feel like I look and feel the best. And then I get down to like 105. Wow. And that looks really, really thin on, first of all, that someone that's pregnant and someone that isn't, you know, I'm not five feet tall. Like I'm not, yeah, everyone's like, oh, I'm only a hundred pounds, but they're five two. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't look good and I still am only probably I gained maybe five pounds but I'm probably still I'm about 110 but it can fluctuate um but that's not I don't want to be this thin like I want to be at least 10 pounds heavier um and so that was really hard um I was really really sick growing up I could only eat saltines and maybe the occasional bowl of oatmeal and like I would go to Whole Foods to get a smoothie because I couldn't even make it myself. I couldn't open the fridge and my boyfriend was working and I was working. So it was just, um, it's really hard to focus on health when like I couldn't control really any of those factors. So, but then I never was like, I should have, 
I should have eaten meat or something because I needed the nutrients and I wasn't getting anything. And because even when I stopped being sick, like all I wanted was to eat, I only wanted cucumbers, like when I was in my third trimester, which you can argue is great for water um, because, you know, when you're pregnant, you need lots of water, you get really thirsty. Um, but I just didn't feel good. Um, and, but it was, but it, everything was fine. I had a healthy pregnancy, a really healthy birth, unmedicated, like all that stuff, able to breastfeed. I'm still breastfeeding um, in my daughter's 16 months. So that is probably been, breastfeeding has where my issues arose was after birth. Like up until then, being a vegan really, it, it never crossed my mind that maybe something was wrong or that I should make a change until a few months, you know, maybe my daughter was six months old because up until then you're so tired and sleep deprived that it's like nothing in the world matters. Um, but then I was like, okay, I'm hungry all the time. Like the most ravenous hunger ever. Like every two hours on the hour I need to eat. I would wake up in the middle of the night and eat. Um, because I, I was starving and um, it's gotten a little bit better, but still really hungry a lot. Um, and after I just started feeling really nutrient depleted, I think after birth, I felt so nutrient depleted and I still feel that way um, from birth and then breast, breastfeeding just from of my daughter took all of my nutrient stores, which is great for her because she is really healthy. Um, but I don't feel so great. And obviously it's important for me to also feel good, especially if I want to have more children, like then really the next child won't get anything if I don't, you know, get healthy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I remember when they took my, um, iron, um, like they prick your finger and my iron was in a nine. And before, and that's, if they said they start doing transfusions at eight and I was like, oh shit, like, um, that's not, that's not good. So I, I did everything I could. I would drink, um, like Vega protein powder and with like an orange and chili with, you know, vitamin C, like just trying to find vegan options that had iron in it. And I would also take an iron pill, but I didn't really like the way it made me feel. So I didn't take it often. Um, and my iron was good enough that I didn't, you know, I didn't bleed out in birth. I was totally fine. Like everything was okay. Um, so I must've gotten lucky or gotten it un under control enough, but I just think that after I had her, it just wiped it all away. So, um, and now I can really tell that like, just being like, why am I so pale when, and I was I don't know, just looking at pictures of myself from a few years ago in the winter, because I live in Ohio. It's sim it's probably similar to Canada. It's cold, it's rainy, there's no sun until April. So of course you're gonna be pale, but there's a different type of pale that anemics are. It's There's no pink in your cheeks. Mm -hmm. I have circles that are like, it just, I always look tired, no matter how awake I feel. Um, and my sister pointed out that like I have like the hair right here is starting to thin on my eyebrows. Yeah. And which is like, oh my God, where, like, where are my eyebrows going? Um, and uh, what is like my hair? Um, well, my hair when I was pregnant, literally from the estrogen turned so blonde. Like every part of my body was blonde hair. Like my armpit hair turned blonde. It was crazy. <laughs> um, but, and this is my natural color. I've never dyed my hair. And like how dark it is up here, it's because like, it's just everything is like lackluster. And I know that that's, mm -hmm. breastfeeding has a lot to do with your, it puts you in a premenopausal state. So you're dry you are tired, you, like, it just, and then being on, just veganism exacerbates all of the breastfeeding symptoms. So that's where it's hard to kind of differentiate between, is this being, you know, vegan nutrient deficient or is it breastfeeding? Most of the time it's both. So 
it's just, yeah, it's, um, it's been hard. Um, my joints actually ache. That's something that I just have like thought about. Like I've noticed it for so long, but my joints are aching. Like if I sit, like I'm sitting cross-legged in a chair right now, if like they hurt, like my knees hurt. And that's, I, that's just so wild to me. Like I was like, Oh, I'm only 22. Like my joints should not hurt. Like my mom who is like, 45 her joints don't even hurt like this yeah like, that is where I was like oh that's not normal <laughs> like you know you can kind of chalk up j- digestive issues and anemia to maybe other factors because people who are not vegan also deal with those problems but then it comes down to the nutrient deficiency and obviously most people are not eating healthy so um or just a nutrient deficient like efficient diet at all so um, yeah and I just got my period back too which after you know I have not getting it for two years has been kind of like it hit me like I ran into a brick wall like it was really hard like it set me back it made me really tired and I was like whoa I have got to do something about this because I could just feel how much worse I felt after like while I was bleeding a lot, like, and I never used to feel like that. Like my periods have always been really easy. I never really noticed them. And this one was like, whoa, Um, it was, uh, it was hard. I had to go to work like the next day and I'm only a bookshelver. Like I don't have like a strenuous job, but um, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, And that was the only time I'd ever had cravings for like meat, like red meat. I was like, I want a, it's it's even weird to think about or say, but I was like, I want a, like a juicy, like rare steak. And I've never really been a big meat eater at all. I, it's never appealed to me as much as to some people. So, um, it's been kind of hard to like deal with that and accept it. Mm -hmm. Um, which I, I just have, and it's just hard to feel guilty about wanting to eat animal foods um but anyways just maybe it's been three months that i one day after i watched bonnie rebecca's um it was right around the time bonnie rebecca's like why i'm no longer vegan video i was like wow um i felt so bad for her i was never like oh my god like all the vegans that are just attacking her for not feeling well like i've never ever felt like that as a vegan like don't attack other people for not feeling well. Like you just need to do what you have to do. So, but then I was like, you know what? I want to eat eggs. Like hearing her talk about it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I went, I went to my dad's house um, and he um, had some eggs in his fridge that he got um, from a grocery store, but they're from a local farm. And I was like, dad, I really want to eat eggs. Can I take some of these home and try them? He was like, yeah, take the carton. Um, And it was really hard to, because my sister is a vegan and my other sister is a vegetarian and my boyfriend's a vegan. So it was really hard to sort of say that to them um, and for them to watch it, like me eat them. And like, it's, it was just very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And but I ate them and I felt really good. Like for maybe 30 minutes, I was like, I felt like really, I felt just a lot more energized. It wasn't a humongous difference, but I definitely felt different. And I can, I I just felt better. And so after that, I started eating eggs and um, I get them in a grocery store, but they're from a farm about an hour away um, from where I live. And um, there's, I love, I now realize I love eggs. (laughs) Like they're so good. Um, I don't love the smell, but the taste is really good so I started eating eggs and like I could eat literally I feel like I could eat a whole carton of eggs a day like so many and then I was like should I be eating this many eggs like I feel like I shouldn't eat you know five eggs a day and maybe you shouldn't for long periods of time but um like I just feel like I could eat so many but then I was like because they're so like nutrient dense in such a little thing. And I was like, that's what I really need is something that is more nutrient dense. Um, and it also turns out my daughter really likes them, which is, um, really good because 
she, after she's just, she's never had animal products. That was the first animal product she'd ever had was eggs and she really likes them. Um, so, but it's been hard because of my boyfriend and he's still vegan and he's been vegan for about three years. And I'm the one that sort of was like, go vegan, like whatever. And now really regret that decision because it's, he doesn't want to go back, which is fine because I can't make him do anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just been very uncomfortable in that regard of like, okay, we live in the same house, but like, are we going to be eating separate meals all the time? Like, you know, um, yeah, it's just been really weird and it's hard to like, it's just hard to navigate that because it's such a weird thing to go through that not a lot of people understand. And, um, it sounds kind of silly when you're like, when you say it to other people, but I don't know. Um, then, so I didn't eat any animal products besides eggs until maybe it's maybe a week or two ago. And, um, I actually checked out, um, uh, Sally Fallon's, um, nourishing, what is it? Nourishing traditions cookbook because there's a lot of like information at the beginning and I all, like I keep looking at it and like I'm such a believer in like um I don't know like signs and stuff and it, I always I work at a library so I always it always catches my eye every time I walk by I did not even know what, what it was about um I just saw the cover and I just it kept popping up like around the library I would find it people would check it out and then I'd be holding it and I was like what okay clearly I need to check this book out um, and so I did, and it's so interesting. It's, it just makes so much sense to me. Like every, it just make it just makes sense. Um, it's just hard to explain to most people, like how, how much it just makes sense. And what I really find interesting is just, um, like the healthiest countries around the world eat animal products and we, like, you don't hear about, you know, I don't know health issues from places like Sweden or like Italy and stuff like, yeah, they have their, you know, health concerns, but like they're literally the healthiest people on the earth right now in like a developed nation since not like an ancestral stuff, which I still think is interesting and, you know, but, um, yeah. And how she talks about, um, kind of like bioindividuality and like where your own ancestors came from. That's probably how you need to eat. And, um, I'm of Norwegian descent. So like, I've, I've always really loved salmon. They eat lots of like root vegetables and berries in the summer. They just eat very seasonally. And, um, which I've, I really love all those foods and it's always, that's kind of how I've always eaten and that's how I like to eat. So it's just always attracted me a lot. And my sister actually spent some time in Sweden this summer or not this. Yeah, it was, it was last summer. Um, and uh, she just said that they eat a lot of meat, um, not like a lot, a lot, but they eat lots of fish, um, like Swedish meatballs, um, and lots of lots and lots of dairy, lots of butter. She was like, they would eat like a tablespoon of butter, like by the spoonful, and but they are all so healthy. Mm -hmm. I just think that that's there's something to be said about that. That. Um, Clearly, it's not the animal products, it's where they're coming from and the processed foods. But most people in the health community like this one know that. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, I, I just started eating salmon. My dad made me some for the first time. Um, over the weekend. And then I just bought some at Whole Foods. I bought like two huge packages of it, the wild caught salmon. Um, because it's cheap. I mean, it's cheaper if you buy it frozen and I don't have a million dollars. Like I'm not very rich. Um, but I try to do that I can with the money that I have. So, um, and I bought some like whole fat grass fed butter and yogurt. And, um, I, t I remember that when we, when we bought the yogurt, I remember getting it out and literally taking a spoonful of like the cream on the top because it like separated. Mm -hmm. And I just took like, it was like kind of the soury cream. And I was just like, this is so good. I wish, <laughs> I wish we had raw milk, but we, we don't right now. But um, I'd love to try it. Um, but I don't know. It, um, 
it just makes me feel a lot more full than like the soy yogurt, which is still fine. My daughter likes it more because it has a more neutral flavor. It doesn't have a very strong taste. Um, but I'm not, I don't want to have to buy it, but also when your kid won't eat certain foods, it's just like, give them whatever you can give them basically. Um, but, um, yeah, I, we just went to, um, Whole Foods a couple days ago and I bought, um, like bone broth. I brought, I bought salmon, yogurts, and, um, uh, I bought a steak, but I can't get myself to eat it yet. So I think I'm going to freeze it, um, and just wait it out because I just, I, I don't know how to cook it. That's the other thing that like, I don't know how to cook animal products. I've never had to before. So I'm like, mm -hmm. no, when this stuff is done, how do you even, so I just have a lot to learn, but after eating salmon last night for dinner with some potatoes and zucchini, um, just roasted in the oven, it made me feel so much fuller longer. Like, and it wasn't like that blood sugar, like up mm -hmm. and down, like at night, because usually I eat dinner. And then an hour later, I'm starving again. And I have to eat some cereal. And then I have to eat, like, just literally whatever I can find. Because then I don't have enough money to be able to just be eating all the time on vegan foods. Because the spike is so high, and then it kind of goes down. It's not like a slow-release, like, protein-rich meal that yeah. I need to be eating. And... Um, it's just when you're so hungry all the time, you will literally do whatever you can to just just feel full, like and satisfied, like good. Um, and um, yeah, so I want to try bone broth, making soups with it, stuff like that, and hopefully that will help my joints because of the collagen. Um, and it the first thing that actually made me have like a shadow of a doubt of veganism was this podcast I listen to sometimes. It's actually a sort of like, um, a, there's like a, like a podcast and, um, a sort of just like, a like a woman's health, like sort of podcast. And it's a woman who's like a body worker and she deals a lot with birth trauma and she's noticed like anecdotally that women that have been vegetarian or vegan do not heal or do not heal as well from birth injuries as women that eat high quality animal products, specifically red meat and bone broth. And so she talks about, she was like, listen, unless you are going to eat, you know, unless you're going to drink some bone broth, you know, every now and again, you're not going to heal the same way that you could heal if you were, you know, eating if you weren't eating vegan basically. And I kind of just like shoved it to the side, but I was like, what does she know? Like that can't be right. Um, but I just thought about it a lot more. And then I listened to another podcast where she sort of said the same thing. And um, I just looked it up and was like, oh, collagen is kind of what holds up your joints and um, gives you like fullness in your, in your face, like plump skin. And I was like, my skin is not like that soft, plump feeling that it should be. And um, it's like just looking at myself in a new light in the mirror and being able to be like, you don't look like you could look. Like most people look at me and they're like, you look fine. Like you look okay. And that's true. I'm not like, you know, I don't look like super, super sick to everyone, but I definitely don't look as healthy as I definitely could look. Um, I just want to look like fuller. I want to look like fertile. Like I feel like I feel so like emaciated and um, it's not, it's not a good feeling because a lot of people are like, you're so thin. You look great. Like whatever. And I'm like, no, I don't feel great. It hurts to sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. All my bones stick out of my body. Like it, I can't lay down on a hard surface. I can't sit on a hard chair. Like I can't, it hurts to like bend down and play with my daughter. Like that's not healthy. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, um, I just want to, I just want to feel better. And, um, that's been a really 
hard. Just admitting that I've been wrong about being vegan has been really hard. Um, and I'm sure you can relate and obviously so many people. Um, and that's why I looked up non-vegan videos, like, or ex-vegan videos, because I was like, am I the only one that feels like this? And, you know, am I the only one that's gone back that feels like silly and lied to and feels dumb for not doing the extensive research like you should? Like, I don't know. Um, but really, you can't really, when someone's so set in their ways, especially ethically, you can't change that. Like you just, eventually, they'll have to just come to on their own. Um, yeah. Like, I wish I could convince my boyfriend to be like, well, maybe you, this isn't the best thing for you, for us, for our daughter. But he's like, but I don't, I don't want to change. I feel good. I feel fine. And I'm like, okay, like, I don't really want to say anything, you know, but it, except for just, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's been tough. And he doesn't really take any vitamins or supplements either. I always took lots of vitamins and supplements. I guess that's, um, uh, I always took, what did I take? Um, like I always took a prenatal vitamin um, and I took algae DHA um, and always extra, I would take vitamin C, but that doesn't, that's not really specific to being a vegan. Um, and I would take zinc. Um, my prenatal had B12. I think it had iodine in it. Um, you know, stuff like that. But it never made me feel like if it was actually absorbing, it would have made me feel better by now. Like it had, it would have to have made me feel better by now. Like if the algae DHA was working, you know, for the three months I was taking it, wouldn't I feel some effect? Um, yeah, I just think that since I get bloated after meals, it just must be, I can't, I'm not absorbing things like I should be. If I was absorbing things like I should be, I would be gaining weight because I consistently eat 2,500 calories a day. Like I can eat, you know, a hundred plus grams of fat a day and I haven't gained any weight at all. I've stayed the same. Maybe I'll gain a pound or two, but then it goes down because it's water weight. So clearly something is not right and should change. And um, yeah, obviously, finally I'm realizing, oh, maybe it's my diet. <laughs> like after mm -hmm. countless other things, like, oh, I, I just feel like everything's sort of come full circle. Um, I'm just thinking, I'm just in like looking at things just from all angles, more angles than I was, just, I don't know. Yeah. Do you have anything that you want to say to uh, any vegans watching, any young moms that are struggling? Uh, um, if you are pregnant and you don't feel your best and you feel like you want to eat meat or eggs or whatever just do it and if you don't feel good then don't do it but i just feel like that's such a common theme is women get cravings for certain things when they're pregnant or breastfeeding and they're just so unsure um and you just just you just need to go for it um just do it because and i guess try to find the highest quality you can afford because in america it is really hard everything is just subsidized to be the crappy, you know, 99% yeah. eggs co covered in the plastic wrapping that, I don't know, I just think in America and probably in Canada, it's just about as hard. Um, and um, yeah, be just, I just don't think pregnant women and children should eat a vegan diet. I just don't anymore. Um, and because they're, the nutrient requirements are so different for those times in your life mm -hmm. um, that like you're just growing um, a whole new human. And like how doc, I'm, Dr. Natasha McBride, she's like, plants are cleansing foods. Um, 
meat, eggs, whatever, they're building foods. And mm -hmm. that just makes sense because of the nutrient, the readily available nutrients in animals versus plants is like, your body just has to work harder when you're a vegan, whether you want to believe it or not, it has to. Yeah, you're, you're growing a human, which is made out of saturated fat and cholesterol, but you're yeah. avoiding saturated fat and cholesterol. Yeah, and I, yeah, um, oh, and I guess another thing is that I have, um, uh, I get really, I have really, really low blood pressure, and so I get dizzy spells because I, like, I, my blood pressure just is so low, um, and it's been low my whole life, but I think that it doesn't help that I'm vegan because I can't, I can't remember, but there's something to do with cholesterol and blood pressure. I know that they're linked, but um, I watched your video on cholesterol and stuff and I was like, oh, I probably don't get enough cholesterol in my diet. And it like, it just throws your body out of whack. It just, it doesn't, your body doesn't work like it should be working. Um, and also I have a lot of cavities and um, I actually have been to the dentist in like four years. I was supposed to go, but I was too sick to go. Um, I just was really sick this past maybe two weeks ago um because we moved so it wasn't necessarily because i'm vegan it was just because we moved so um but yeah lots of cavities um i had when i went four years ago i had nine cavities in yeah. they were in all of my teeth and no one ever was like what are you eating like maybe it's your diet that is making it this way and it, i still had i just now was like oh I bet it's because of my diet. Like it blows my mind that I pro and I can see them in my mouth now. Like I can, I have like a tooth, it's like rotten basically. Um, I have, and it's made it worse because you're, when you're pregnant, your baby leaches all the calcium from your body if they're not getting sufficient amounts while from your food. So she just took all of my calcium. Um, and I have a lot of cavities now. And I know that moms that aren't vegan deal with cavities, but I definitely think it made it a lot worse. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I, I watch a lot of videos where kids' health tends to suffer on a vegan diet. And as of now, I haven't noticed any bad things about being a vegan so far on my daughter. But um, I mean, that's not to say that something couldn't happen. Um, you know, because people are like, oh, my God, they're really bad. You know, they're rotting out of their mouth. They're falling out. She, she's very healthy, but that's like, oh, is something? Um. So yeah, it's just it'll be hard because my boyfriend doesn't want her to eat. Her dad doesn't eat animal products, um, but. I'm like, no, I want her. The sound went out. Um, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. There's just like a noise now. Okay, one second. Let me mute mine because I think it's in the background. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, she... I want her, she doesn't really, like, she doesn't like a bunch of animal products that she's tried yet, but I don't care. I want to sneak them into her food because she's not, you just, the fact that you can't absorb plants as well as you can, you know, preformed vitamin, you know, like, you know, vitamins that are in animal foods. It's like, it's scary to think that what if she's not getting what she needs and I think that most parents and not, you know, not parents at all realize can, you know, agree that, yeah, if something's not working for you, then it probably will not work for your kid. And she's fine as of now because of the nutrient stores that I have given her. But in a year, maybe they'll be gone where she, it, she could just be more susceptible. So. And the breast milk is a, a safety net because she's getting everything she needs from the breast milk so the plants are just you know an addition but once that she's off of breast milk for a while then that's when you would start noticing yeah and that's that part is scary because right now i don't worry about her nutrition as much because of um the breast milk and um 
especially now that I'm eating more animal foods, I'm like, okay, she's at least getting what she needs through breast milk. It's a really big safety net. You're right. And, um, but you know, maybe in, I don't know, I don't know when she'll want to stop, but kids start to slow down because they grow and they don't need it as much. So when she doesn't need it as much is when I think all parents could start to worry, but it definitely would be, I would worry more that, you know, she wasn't eating um, enough um, animal products because you just can't, especially children, I don't think that they can absorb things as well. They're not as, you know, adaptable as adults, I think. Um, and uh, you want your kid to have the best, you know, like foundation, basically. And yeah, that's going to be sort of a hard thing to work around between, you know, her dad and me. But um, hopefully it starts becoming more normal and, you know, it sort of just resolves itself. And yeah. But yeah, men tend to not uh, be depleted as fast or notice uh, mm -hmm. because they're not bleeding as much. They don't have as much of a need for more nutrients. And it's very common that um, when women have their first child and they're on a vegan diet, then that's when they, that's the first time where they start noticing. Yeah. Um, so it's going to depend on his nutrient stores, his current health, his, you know, digestion, his genetics. There's a bunch of different factors. Um, I, and I experienced the same thing with my boyfriend. He was still vegan um, when I told him all this stuff. And at first he was like, okay, like, um, I'm good. I'm going to stay vegan. You can eat your eggs or whatever. And I was like, okay. I didn't want to force him. And then he started seeing how many benefits, health benefits I was getting. And he was like, okay, I think I have to reconsider this. Yeah. So I just gave him the space to do what he wanted, what felt best for him. And he came around eventually. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm secretly hoping. I would never necessarily say that to him because I think, because he really, really wants to keep eating this way. And no matter what, if he decides to eat this way forever, I all I can do is support him. But um, I think if I start seeing like real noticeable health benefits, then I think it will be hard to deny like, oh, maybe something isn't totally right. So um, yeah. Anything else you wanted to say? Um, I think that's it. I'm sure in 30 minutes I'll think of something else, but that doesn't <laughs> Well, you can always comment on the video and add something in, and if you want, I can pin it at the top of the video if there's anything you forgot. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, thank, thank you, you so, so much. Yeah, this was and awesome. I enjoyed your story because um, it's the first one um, I've had that somebody was pregnant, so. Oh, yeah, I think that it's, um, that's kind of what I was like, I really think that I should say something because I haven't seen a lot of um, pregnant mom, whatever things that, like, I'm not vegan anymore. The only one I saw was, like, the moon and rock one. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. names, but, yeah, I saw that one. Um but yeah, I just don't think it's talked about enough because women, when they're pregnant, they need, it's just a really different time. Um, mm -hmm. So I think a lot more light should be shed on that. Like, and how your health is now is how it stays in your body and your children will eventually have that like passed down to them. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just think it's important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.